It can be really difficult to synchronize your state inside React with local storage. This is why in this video we will create a custom hook in order to work with local storage efficiently. And as you can see here, I already prepared for us a small application. This is just an input with text inside and we can change this input. Here is how it looks like. We have here a use state hook with default name Jack. Here we have a console log and inside our markup we just have an input with our value and set name that we are calling when we are changing this input. Now the main question how we can synchronize our value inside the input with our local storage. And typically you will do it inside use effect because this is how you are doing inside effects inside React. So here we are writing use effect and inside we will pick a function. Now every single time when we change our name we want to set something in local storage. This is why here we can use dependency array and provide here our name. And now here our use effect will be triggered every single time when we update our state. This is why here we simply need to call local storage set item and we are providing inside first of all some key and then our value. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page here, we have here Jack and we can directly click on application and inside our local storage we have a name Jack. Why that? Because this use effect was triggered on initialize when your state set it our default value. Now here I start to type something and as you can see this value is directly updated not just inside state but also inside local storage. And essentially this solution is really fine for the small applications. But every single time when you are working with local storage, you are writing this code. And with every usage of use effect inside your components, they become less understandable and more error prone. This is why it is a great idea to create a custom hook to make exactly the same stuff, which will eliminate the using of use effect inside every single component. So this is how our usage must look like. Instead of use state, we want here something like use local storage. And inside we want to provide key and value. And our key here will be name and default value will be Jack. And we will eliminate completely use effect from here because this is not a right place for it. Now I can directly remove use state and use effect and our use local storage must do everything. It must work directly like use state, so it must update values inside our React project, but additionally it must synchronize these values with the local storage. And then in every single component with a single liner, we can work with local storage efficiently without using use effect. So let's create here a new file, use local storage.gsx and define here our function. So it will be use local storage and we know that here we are getting key and initial value. And now here we must export our function use local storage. And the first question what we need to return here back. We want to return here our state for this key and also a setter. So exactly like inside your state. This is why here I want to return an array with stored value and also a setter set value. So what is our stored value? This is just a state inside this custom hook. This is why here we must use your state. So here we will have our stored value and also set stored value. And as you can see, these are different functions. Here we are returning set value and this is set stored value. So this is not the same function like here inside your state. And here I am using your state and inside I am providing a function and not just initial value because I want to write quite a lot of code here. So first of all we want to check if we have a window because if we don't, for example, we are inside Node.js, then we can simply ignore local storage and it will work out of the box. So we can check here if type of window equals undefined. Then we want just to return initial value and this is what we are providing here as a second parameter. After that we need try catch. Why try catch? Because we will use JSON parse to parse our local storage and it might fail if our data inside are corrupted. This is why we want to handle it accordingly. So here I am writing try and catch and let's first talk about catch. If we are getting some error, first of all we want to log it. So let's write here console log error. And after this we just want to return initial state. Because if we have an error, we don't want to be broken, we want just to work without local storage. 
Now inside tribe we want to get our element from local storage. So let's say this is our item and we're calling here local storage get item with the key that we provided. Now here we want to use JSON parse and parse it if we have it and if not then we will return our initial value. So here we are checking do we have our item, if yes then we are calling here JSON parse and I am providing inside our item, in other case I am returning here initial value. So this is our initial state, here we either read it from local storage if everything is fine or we simply return initial value that we provided from the outside. And now we need to create our setter, this is why here let's define a function set value and we are getting here a value that we want to set from the outside. And again here I will write try catch because it can fail. Here we are getting an error and if we have an error I will just console log here an error and I won't do anything because we can't set a value. Now first of all here inside try we want to update our local state, this is why here set stored value and we are providing here our value, this line won't break. But after this we want to set something inside local storage, this is why we want exactly the same check for our undefined, if type of window in this case does not equal undefined then we want to set it inside local storage. So here will be local storage dot set item and we are using here key and json stringify because we can store inside our local storage only strings and here I am providing our value which actually means our set value updates our local state, it will work always and if we have local storage then we will update it here accordingly. And as you can see we didn't use here use effect at all because it is not needed. Now let's check if we imported it inside our app, we did not, this is why here on the top we must import use local storage from file use local storage. As you can see we are getting here initial value because our local storage is empty. But now let's try to change our input and just to remind you here we are calling set name and this is just a setter for our local storage where we are providing our value. So here I am just typing something and as you can see our value inside local storage is updated directly. But this is not all, as you can see our value name inside our component is also synchronized, we are getting it from our local storage hook. Which actually means here with a single liner we implemented synchronization of the state and our local storage. And actually if you are interested to know how to optimize rendering inside your React application, make sure to check this video also.